here's what most preppers don't know about cold weather survival. While you've been stockpiling MREs and ammo, 175 million Chinese people have been heating their homes for literally 2,500 years without a single watt of electricity or cubic foot of natural gas. Not as a backup plan, as the primary system, and in regions where winter temperatures drop to negative 53 Celsius. Doesn't matter if you're rural Heilongjiang or your suburban basement in Montana, cold is cold. Your body stops working the same way, and if you understand how an ancient civilization kept millions of people alive through Siberian winters using nothing but clay, straw, and some very clever engineering, you might just make it through whatever grid-down scenario is headed your way. Let's talk survival heating. No furnace required. First, picture this. Your bed is also your heater. Not sitting next to a heater, not under an electric blanket, the actual sleeping platform is a 2-meter brick structure with a maze of flues running underneath it, channeling hot exhaust from your cooking fire through clay passages that heat the entire surface to a comfortable 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. You cook dinner in the adjacent room, the smoke and heat snake through the brick channels beneath your bed, and 8 hours later, you're still sleeping on a warm surface even when the fire went out at midnight. This is the Kang bed stove. Been around since 722 BC. Still used in 85% of rural northern China as of 2004. That's 67 million of these things keeping people alive where central heating simply doesn't exist. Here's why it works. Thermal mass. Those bricks and clay slabs aren't just structure, they're a battery. They absorb heat during cooking, store it in the material itself, then radiate it back into the room for 8 to 12 hours. Your body isn't fighting the freezing ambient air temperature anymore. You're lying directly on a heated surface that stays warm even when the room around you is ice cold. The beauty is the integration. You're not burning fuel specifically to heat, you're cooking anyway. Straw, firewood, dried corn stalks, whatever biomass you can find. The cooking fire's exhaust, which would normally just fly up a chimney and waste 70% of its heat, gets channeled horizontally through the Kang body first. By the time that smoke finally reaches the chimney, it's already given up most of its thermal energy to the brick. The efficiency rate is around 40-50%. to 50%. Compare that to an open fireplace, which is maybe 15% efficient. No electricity, no thermostat, no pilot light, just clay, bricks, straw, and 2,500 years of iterative engineering. In a long-term grid-down scenario, this is your sleeping solution. But what if you need heat somewhere other than your bed? Let's talk about portable heat. This brings us to charcoal braziers. Small, portable, and deadly if you're stupid about ventilation. A brazier is just a metal or ceramic bowl filled with ash and glowing charcoal. It sits in the middle of the room and radiates heat in a two-meter circle. Sounds primitive, and it is, but when managed properly, it works. Charcoal is the key here. Not wood, not coal briquettes. Charcoal. It burns longer, produces minimal smoke, and generates consistent radiant heat. And here's what matters in a grid-down situation. You can make charcoal from basically any hardwood. Burn it in a low oxygen environment, let it carbonize, and you've got fuel that stores indefinitely. Your brazier becomes a mobile heating unit. Move it to the kitchen today, the bedroom tonight, wherever you need warmth. But ventilation is non-negotiable. Carbon monoxide from incomplete combustion will kill you in your sleep. Traditional Chinese homes were drafty. That wasn't an accident, it was a design feature. Fresh air intake, exhaust pathways. Never seal yourself in a room with burning charcoal unless you want to become a statistic. Now, let's take the principle of the king bed and expand it. Some northern Chinese homes don't have a raised king. They have a de-king, a ground king. The entire floor is the heating system. Stone or brick is laid in channels across the floor surface. A fire pit is at one end and a flue system runs underneath the entire room. Hot smoke travels horizontally under your feet before exiting through a chimney. The floor temperature rises to 25 degrees. You're not heating the air. You're heating the surface you're standing on. The Romans had this. The Koreans have ondol, and archaeological evidence shows the Chinese have been doing it for 7,200 years. Why this matters for a prepper is that you're not losing heat to the ceiling. Warm air doesn't rise and disappear if the floor itself is the heat source. You get radiant warming from the ground up. 
It's labor-intensive to build, absolutely, but it's completely passive once constructed. What all these systems have in common is a mastery of thermal mass, which leads us to the earth stove. Clay and adobe are poor conductors of heat, which means once you get them hot, they stay hot. Traditional earth stoves are built from compressed clay mixed with straw. The stove chamber sits below ground level for insulation. You burn biomass fuel inside, and the thick clay walls absorb heat, then continue radiating that warmth into the room for hours after the fire dies. It's the same principle as a masonry heater. Slow burn, thermal mass storage, extended heat release, and you can build it with hand tools and local materials. No welding, no factory parts, no supply chain dependency. Sometimes, though, you don't need to heat the whole room. You just need to heat yourself. This is about efficiency through localization. Chinese imperial families used ornate brass hand warmers with engraved phoenixes. Regular people used simple tin fire baskets. Both are small containers filled with glowing charcoal embedded in ash. A perforated lid lets heat radiate out while containing the embers. You can hold it in your hands or place it under a table with a blanket draped over the top, creating a heated pocket for your legs. Heating an entire structure takes a massive amount of fuel. Heating your immediate body takes a handful of coals. And for the absolute lowest tech solution, there's the Tong Posey. It literally translates to hot water wife because it keeps you warm in bed. It's a flat metal container, usually copper or tin. You pour in boiling water, screw the lid tight, wrap it in cloth so it doesn't burn you, and place it at the foot of your bed. It radiates heat for six to eight hours. No fire in the bedroom, no combustion risk, no ventilation concerns. Just thermal mass in liquid form, releasing stored heat gradually. Any sealed metal container can work. You boil water over your cooking fire, transfer it to the container, and you've got portable warmth that lasts through the night. So why does any of this actually work? Your body is already trying to maintain 37 degrees Celsius. Every system we've talked about just makes that job easier. The Kang and floor systems use stored heat in clay and brick. The brassiers and hand warmers use targeted radiant heat. The hot water vessels use liquid thermal batteries. None of them require external energy grits. All of them work with biomass fuel you can scavenge. Wood, straw, dried plants, anything that burns. If you can maintain your core body temperature through a grid down winter, your odds of survival go up exponentially. Hypothermia kills faster than hunger, and while everyone else is freezing in their useless electric-dependent homes, you could be sleeping on a warm kang, holding a brass hand warmer, and staying alive using technology that's older than gunpowder. There's no light switch, no gas line, no utility bill, just clay, charcoal, biomass, and the stubborn refusal to freeze to death in your own home. In a long-term collapse scenario, this knowledge is the difference between shivering through winter and actually sleeping warm. If the temperature drops and the power stays off, you'll know what to do. If it doesn't, well, you've just learned something 175 million people have known for 2,500 years. Now start gathering clay. You've got a king to build before the next cold snap hits.